All right, check this out. You guys are back on the Hater World and on Blue Devil. What we have going on today is 1090 Jake exposing the newest member of the Rat Club. Now, if you want to know the starting five for the Rat Club, you got 6ix9ine, you got Pino from Florida, you got a P from QC, you got Gunna, and now you got to add King Yellow from Chicago, right? We all know that 1090 Jake exposes these rats. He does his uh, due diligence. He, you know, he pulls paperwork. He pulls the black and white. So he's just not speaking to speak. He's actually got the evidence for everyone to see. Now, look, we're living in an age, 2023, where people don't care no more. People don't care. You know, uh, they only care about what you can provide for them. If you... If you're providing money, they can see past the allegations. If you're providing good music, they can see past the allegations. But some people still stand on business, you know. Uh, but what happens is that when those people that stand on business stand on business, sometimes, uh, you know, they, they get attacked by the, by the ones that don't care, you know, by the ones that, by the fake ones. Because we all know that the fake outnumber the real. We all see what happened with the Jenny 6 9 and Lady Pink situation. You know, we all see what happens with 6 9 situation. We all see what's happening right now with King Yella, him trying to, you know, uh, uh, tell you that he not a rat when in true reality he is. You know, but it's the age we're living in. We're living in that age of, it's okay. We don't care about that stuff. We just care about the music. And that's all good and dandy until they tell on somebody you love. You know, until they tell on somebody that you're close to, then it's F all rats. So that's why you're supposed to stand on business at all times. But look, I'm not going to give you no intro. Let's go ahead and watch this video and get you guys a Southsiders reaction. Let's get it. Jake, we're not rocking with y'all and y'all rocking with me. And for this video, we're going to be speaking on King Yella and his voluntary statement at the police station. Now, King Yella has been very vocal on his YouTube channel as he's recently... Re keyword, voluntarily, all right? Make sure you guys remember that keyword, voluntary, all right? That means that you weren't asked to tell, you just wanted to tell. Let's go. His rap career is going nowhere fast. Facts. Famous for getting shot in his own music video, being affiliated with other Chicago rappers, and being a face for the gangster disciples. King Yella has maintained a social media presence by putting himself into anything relating to the GDs and constantly talking about Lil Durk. He's also made a strong stance against snitches after dropping a song titled Famous Rats where he takes shots at 6ix9ine, Gunna, and Boston Richie. In his lyrics, he'd speak on rappers folding in the interrogation room and in his motion to suppress, King Yellow would try to get his statements in the interrogation room thrown out. Back in February of 2018, Las Vegas PD pulled over a It's always the biggest rats that are trying to cover up by making songs about other rats. You know, uh, they're always trying to get the shine off of them. Like, let me call these rats out or these people out or say things about these people so that way they don't look my way. You know, let's go. Silver Infinity for parking in a handicapped spot. Officers would identify the driver as Simone Lewis, who's more commonly known as King Yella. Fidgety and non-compliant with verbal commands, officers would eventually get Yella to exit the vehicle as officers placed him in handcuffs. A records check would show Yella was not only a convicted felon, but failed to register as a felon within 48 hours. An officer would conduct a pat-down search, and Yella would claim the officer felt his dick when the officer pulled a 380 Ruger from Yella's pants. Damn. The small six-shot gun was loaded with four rounds of ammunition. King Yella would then be a... Damn, four rounds only. Hey, sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do. You know, we all know homies that roll around with straps and no clips, no magazine, you know, or only one bullet in the chamber, you know. Come on, we all know homies like that. And in the hood, you can only, you're only going to carry what you can get, bro. You feel what I'm saying? It happens. It happens. 
arrested and charged with being a convicted felon and failing to register, carrying a concealed weapon without a permit, possession of a firearm by a prohibited person, and parking in a handicapped space. King Yellow would be transported to the Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department Central Intelligence Unit, where he agreed to give a voluntary statement. He agreed to talk to the popo, all right? I guarantee you the cop said, hey, do you want to talk to us about what happened or not? And he said, yeah, I'll talk to you guys. That's how it went down, bro. The cops ask you, do you want to talk about the situation, yes or no? And he said, yeah, let's talk about it. You know why he said, yeah, let's talk about it? Because he probably figured if I talk to these cops, I might be able to wiggle out of this situation. But he wasn't able to wiggle because he went to prison on that charge. I remember when this happened. The tape the tape of, I think TMZ had the tape where uh, he was getting pulled over and, and got arrested. But that's what happened. He said, yeah, I want to talk. The tape recorded interview would start with Detective Brigandi telling King Yella, all right, because they got you in cuffs, man, you're not free to leave. You have the right to remain silent. Anything you say can't be used against you in a court of law. You understand your rights? King Yellow would reply with, mm-hmm. The detective would reintroduce himself saying he works in the intelligence section and used to work in gang investigations. They'd ask Yellow about his arrest, how long he's been in Vegas, and where he's originally from. Asked if he's a rapper, Yellow would again reply with, mm-hmm. Eventually the detective would say, and what's up? You a gangster disciple, correct? Yellow would answer, well, I don't really gangbang, but if that's what I, you know what I'm saying? Yellow would confirm he was born into the gang. That's what you're supposed to do, though. Like, you're always supposed to deny where you're from to the cops. I know there's people out there that'll, that'll act tough with cops. Yeah, I'm from so-and-so, blah, 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 blah. But no, nah, you're always supposed to say, I don't know. I ain't from nowhere. I don't gangbang. You know, I'm not a gangbanger. I'm not from no gang. You know, uh, now when you're going through classification, sometimes it's best if you actually say where you're from so that way they can classify you correctly, you know. Uh, but I'm not sure if that gets used against you. But I know when the cops on the streets pull you over or like right here that it's paperwork, uh, you know, it's best to say you're not from nowhere. The disciples in the South. Mark my words, just say you're from Earth out of Chicago and then speak on his criminal history. The detective would briefly bring up a redacted incident involving Planet Hollywood before telling Yella he's a high profile guy. The detective would ask Yella about an open feud on the internet between him and a person whose name was redacted from the paperwork. Yella would confirm they had a feud but say it is in beef. When asked what it was about, King Yella would say Cardi B and that his boy Tommy G's from New York used to fuck her. Wow. He's telling the popo everything. Damn, Cardi B? They got Cardi B uh, in the mid middle of all this drama. That's sad, bro. Leave Cardi B alone, homie. She a superstar now. It would now become clear they were talking about Yella's feud with Offset. At this point, Yella was given a damn Cam Capone interview to the intelligence detective, when the detective stated the concern was over if Cardi and Offset visit Vegas to perform, would there be an issue with King Yella? Yella would say, I don't know. I'm not on that with them. You're the guy with the gun, the person who would do anything to protect the ones you love. But did you know you could do them? Know what I'm saying? Ain't no telling what they might be on or how they feel. But this is how Damn. the detective got King Yella. Wait, 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 wait. So he said, I won't do nothing to them. But they might do something to me? Damn. Ask if the Migos were from Atlanta, which they both knew the answer to, before asking Yella if Offset was GD, to which Yella replied, yeah. Now why he would confirm to an intelligence detective that another rapper is a gang member yeah, is beyond me. Facts. And people can try and claim the police already knew. It don't matter, bro. I don't care if the cops know I don't care if everybody knows, right? That ain't none of your business. Now you're just affirming the cops' uh, homework. You know, you're grading it. The cop brought you the homework, 
hey, uh, officers of GD, so and so, so and so, and you're just grading it. Yeah, he is. Yeah, he is. This one's wrong. This one it is. Like, come on, homie. Come on. Now, if they ever wanted to use this fool for a star witness, they could. They can send them a subpoena, get them in the in the in the in the hot seat, and ask them, "Hey, is this guy a GD?" You know, I don't know what would happen. He probably deny that shit on stand, but he could. They could subpoena him to be a star witness now because he has given information on a different person. Doesn't matter when it comes to the courts. Gang members are further identified by so-called gang experts, how we saw in the YNW Melly case, or gang members turn rat. But this wouldn't be the only rapper slash gang member Yella spoke on in his voluntary statement. When asked why he was rolling with a gun, Yella would claim because he's high profile and to protect himself. When asked where he got it, he'd give a name that was redacted before saying Kayla and confirming Kayla what? bought it. He'd claim he forgot the name of the gun store and that it was a 380 Ruger. Wow, so he straight up said who sold him the gun. Bro, there's no going back from this, homie. I thought it was just him. Wow. The detective would confirm they separated, but she's pregnant with this kid. So Yella admitted to getting the gun off his own baby mama, naming her as the one who bought it, which could have resulted in her being charged with a straw purchase or illegally buying a gun for a convicted felon. And remember, this is a voluntary statement. Yella had the right to remain silent the entire fucking time. Bro, all he had to say is, I don't want to talk. I ain't got nothing to say. That's all he had to say, bro. He's incriminating himself for no reason. Seeing how willing Yella is to speak, the detective would say, what's up with the other dude from Chicago, Breezy? He's a black disciple? And Yella would say, yeah, he's in jail. The detective wow. would then ask about the incident in which King Yella and Billionaire Black approached 600 Breezy in the mall. Much of what was said was redacted, but Yella claims that video would have been a motherfucker got beat up. Then This goes to show you that the cops are watching everything on the internet. The cops asked King Yella, What's up with this fight that almost went down at the mall? That that was on the internet for everyone to see. So if the cops asked them, bro, that means the cops are watching. And we all know the cops are watching, but this is even more evidence to anybody right now, to anybody watching right now, that the cops are always paying attention. And he was cool. He had no problem with them, and they were grown about it. But once again, Yellow would confirm to an intelligence detective that not only is he a GD and Offset's a GD, but 600 Breezy's a BD. Wow. Adam22 would ask Breezy how he feels after learning Yellow was speaking about him to detectives. I'm trying to ask Offset and 600 Breezy how they feel about getting identified as members by a rapper. How we feel about that? Um, he basically is um, incriminating me, saying that I am a bad individual to the community, and I'm just a rapper, man. You know, a lot of types of members. I don't know what 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 Simone is talking about. <laughs> hey, facts. He's not lying. Like, hey, I don't know anything. Don't incriminate me. Don't put me in the middle of anything. I'm just a law-abiding citizen. <laughs> he's he's basically he's trying to get me out the way, y'all. He's trying to get me. I won't be his friend. He's trying to get me off the streets. He done told them that I'm a gang member to the feds. And man, that's y'all homie, man. You, you heard know? it here first. It, it hit different when they snitching on me. <laughs> <laughs> now the detective would ask about a man that was stopped at a fashion show that was cool with Lil Dirk, and Yellow would say Snap Dog. The detective wow. playing dumb would say that's his name. And Yellow would confirm saying he was in Vegas a couple months ago. Snapdog would take the Instagram after learning Yellow brought his name up in the interrogation room. Hey, my nigga 1090 Jake a real one, bro. My nigga called me, man. Tell me y'all boys ain't street like how y'all say y'all is, man. That's funny, right? He goes, he goes, look, this is where I'm gonna kill it, cause we already all find out that King Yellow's a rap. But check this out. Snapdog said. 1090 Jake's a real one because he's exposing these rats. Until the video's about you. He a real one, but when he pulls out paperwork that you told, 
And I'm not saying snap dogs, just anybody, right? Then all of a sudden, uh, 1090 a bitch. So don't, hey, listen, if you rock with them, don't be mad when it's you that they got paperwork on, you know, because there's other rappers. I don't know. I can't really mention who right now, but I think it was, who was it? There was a rapper out there that was cool with them, Kodak Black. It was cool with them. And then when they called him out for that 6 9 song, all of a sudden it was fuck 1090. Look, if you're going to rock with somebody, rock with somebody, bro. Because, look, you can't just be com- it, when it when it's convenient for you. That's just, just not cool. But, listen, uh, again, starting lineup, starting five for the uh, the Rat Club. You got 6ix9ine. You got Pino from Florida. You got uh, you got Gunna. You got uh, P from QC. And now you got King Yellow from Chicago. That's a hell of a lineup. I'm not going to lie. That's, that's, that's a hell of a lineup, bro. That'd be a whole lot of years in prison right there. So, look, we're going to kill this video. We're laying call it a day. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Shout out to 1090 Jake for doing his due diligence and doing what he's supposed to do. He out here cleaning the streets. He's letting us know who who's with it and who's not with it. You know, I would like to know if I'm sitting next to a rat. I know you would, too. Uh, but, you know, all the ones that, that are in the comments saying they don't care, either they don't know what time it is, they're too young, or... or they a bunch of nobodies, you know, uh, you know, but it is what it is. Salute to all the real ones. All the real needs to unite because these these fake out here, bro, are, are populating the streets and trying to take over. So salute to all the real ones. You guys already know all love. We go live tonight at 7 p.m. Hater World Uncensored. And with that being said and nothing else to be said, I'm Blue Devil. It's been the Hater World production and we out.